Hi, this is Reed Bailey. This is a video on when to use a single sample t-test. This is part of the intuitive statistics series of videos where we're really aiming at getting you to know when to use certain statistical tests, not so much on the mathematics behind the statistics. Uh, we're assuming you've already had a traditional statistics course where you've been exposed to and learned that kind of material. So we're going to do this in the context of an example. In this case, the shelf life of sodas. So imagine that you have 10 bottles were randomly selected and we were testing to see if the mean shelf life exceeded 120 days. Let's look at what that might look like on a graph. Now we have already marked on this graph um, the target value of 120 days, left to right being the number of days in a shelf life. And we have plotted um, the data or characteristics of the data. In particular, we've the sample mean is approximately where it's shown on this graph. It is higher than 120. The shape of this distribution uh, is not the shape of the actual data. This is a normal distribution uh, with the same characteristic mean and standard deviation of the sample. Uh, and then we know something about the spread of the data. And I'm just going to use the word spread, um, where if it were a tighter, taller, skinnier distribution, that would be a narrower spread. If it were wider, and spread out more, that would be a, a larger spread. And ultimately our question is, is the average shelf life of the sample, the Y bar, greater than our target uh, mean value of 120 days? Now what we want you to start thinking about is using just these three variables shown at the bottom of the graph, the target value mean, the sample mean value, and the spread of the sample, what kind of a, of a measure would you make to um, determine whether Y bar was indeed significantly different from the target value of 120 days. To help you with that, let's consider this. What if we were just trying to say, is the average shelf life greater than 40 days? Now, I think everybody would agree that it's much more likely for the data that we have that the average shelf life is greater than 40 days than it is to say that it's greater than 120 days. We'd be much more confident saying it's greater than 40 days. What about it makes us more confident? And maybe can you use the answer to that question to answer the main question that we have? We want you to pause and answer this question before you go ahead. What measure can you construct using the terms below, the mean of our sample, the mean target value we're trying to reach, and the spread of our sample, that would be an effective measure of whether the sample mean was different than the target value. Well, welcome back. Now that you've unpaused and come to an answer, let me show you what a lot of people come to and arrive at when they consider this same question. And it's a pretty straightforward looking formula. It's just saying, what is the difference between my sample mean and my target value? The larger that is, the more likely it is for these two to be different divided by the spread of our sample value. Now, the nature of this uh, measure would be that if we had a really large positive number to this measure, we would be more confident that indeed our sample was larger than the mean. If we got a really small number, like close to zero, we would be harder to determine that indeed that our sample was different than our target value. And that small number could come about from a really, really large spread or it could come about from a really, really small difference between our Y bar and the mu value, our sample mean and our the mean of our target value. A large negative number, we would be, again, more and more confident that indeed our um, sample is much smaller than, than the mean value, the target value that we're trying to achieve. So the whole point in showing you this is that this is a fairly intuitive expression uh, or measure that you might come up with. Let me abstract away from this. This measure of spread that we could use is standard error. Uh, if we're talking about means. Um, standard area, error looks like this, where it's the expression for standard error is now included in the equation. This is nothing other than the one sample t statistic. So why do we show you this when we said we weren't going to show you any equations? It's to show you that the T statistic makes a lot of sense ultimately. It's just a measure that the bigger it is, the more likely it is. Your mean value is different than the target value. The smaller it is, 
in terms of closer to zero, the less likely it is that your mean value of your sample is different than that target value. So now we're going to go to Minitab and actually run the t-test, the one sample t-test, with the data that we have. Here in Minitab, I've already entered in the data over here in column one that we have from our 10 samples. You can see all 10 are here. And now I'm going to go, and the first thing is always a good idea is to graph. In this case, I want to make an individual value plot. Um, and we'll make that data of our shelf life data. We only have one column of data, so we can put that one in, C1. And I've selected a few options here um, that I'd like to have, which are that we want to have a mean symbol, uh, the individual symbols, and the interval bar. And let's go ahead and go. And your plot might be vertical. This one I've set up to be horizontal to match our other plots. And we can see our red dots are the actual data. Shelf life is lower to the left, higher to the right. And here's our mean value, a little over 130. And here's our 95% confidence interval on the mean. We actually can learn a lot from this, but we'll go ahead and run this statistical test. In this case, we talked about it's going to be a one sample t-test. Our samples are in the column C1, and we can either enter that in or we can click it with our mouse and hit select. But we want to perform the test to say, is it the hypothesized mean is 120, our target mean is 120. We want to see if it's not equal to what we'll do first, which would be a two-sided test, and we can hit go. And here's the output that we get. We can see our confidence interval here and the actual values for it. And we can see that 120 is within our confidence interval, so not surprisingly, our p-value is greater than 0.05. In this case, it's 0.109. So a question I'm going to pause and have you ask or try to think about now is, what's going to happen to our p-value if we run a one-sided test? Remember, we were interested in, is our actual mean greater than 120? So do you think our p-value is going to go up, go down, or not change. Let's go ahead and hit the button and see. Our p-value is not only smaller, it's exactly half as small. Um, half the size of our p-value when we did a two-sided test. So our p-value is much closer to 0.05 at this point. It's just a hair over 0.05. We go back to the slides and we have the same data in front of us. And we show you this to show you that if you run a one-sided or two-sided test, you can get different values for your p-value. And when you run a one-sided test, you're always going to get lower p-values, which can lead to the question of, well, which one should I run? And should you run a one-sided or a two-sided test? That question is going to put a lot of people into a lot of debate, and we'll let them do that. I think the bottom line is to be cognizant that when you run a one-sided test, you're going to get a lower p-value. So you better be pretty confident in yourself that that's the right test to run when you run it. Here's a summary chart we're going to see throughout some of these videos. And we're filling in the first row today. Now all these are for interval or ratio dependent variables. These are referred to as parametric statistics. When you only have one sample, one level of your independent variable, you run a one sample t-test. Um, the assumptions of this is that the data is normally distributed and that the samples are independent from one another. We're not going to review how to test those assumptions right here in this video. So let's end with an example. Here's a picture of the Panama Canal. And we have a few questions about uh, possible tests you, you could run or questions you might want to answer. And for which of these would you use a one sample t-test? Question one is, which month of the year has the most transit in terms of ship tonnage through the canal? Two, did tugboat captains who participated in a training program reduce the average transit time of their ships compared to before completing the transit program? Would you use a one sample t-test on either of those? We have two more possibilities. Is the average salinity of water in Lake Gatun, which is the lake that is part of the Panama Canal, lower than 1.100 parts per thousand. And then D, are ships originating in China or Japan carrying, on average, more valuable cargo? Which of these four questions, if any, would you use a one-sample t-test for?
before we show you the answer, let's wrap up. Here's what you should have learned today. When to use a one sample t-test that you need to have a single sample compared to a threshold or a target. And your dependent variable is interval or ratio. Now the data needs to be normally distributed uh, and independent from one another. And we've also shown you a little bit about how to do this in Minitab. And this is the root of the t-statistic is a fairly common sense measure of the difference between the mean and your target value over the spread. Back to our questions here. Which one would you use a one sample t-test? Well, in A, which month of the year? Well, in that case, we have 12 samples, so that's not a one sample t-test. B, did 10 book captains who participated in a program reduce their transit time compared to before the program? Well, in this case, your two samples are before and after, so you have two samples. Is average salinity of water in Lake Gatun lower than 1.100 parts per thousand? In this case, we do have one sample, which would be samples of the salinity of Lake Gatun, and we're comparing it to a target or threshold value. And in this case, the target or threshold value is an interval or ratio variable, parts per thousand. And then, so in this case, you actually you would be able to use the one sample t-test. And then, are ships originating in China or Japan? carrying on average more valuable cargo. Here you have two different samples, China or Japan. So you would not be able to use a one sample t-test here.